2013 Chevrolet Silverado with drum brakes. <clears throat> so I wasn't going to film this because there's not too many vehicles anymore that's got drum brakes on the back. Um, I'm actually surprised that this Silverado has uh, drum brakes, but I guess this particular model, this is an LT, I guess they have drum brakes. I thought they all came standard with the with, uh, disc, but apparently not. Anyway, people struggle, seems like, with uh, drum brakes. And, you know, I, I get it. There's a lot of, there, there's springs and, and you know, all kinds of stuff that can kind of get people confused and, and uh, you know, frustrated trying to figure out where they all go, how they go, the easiest way to get them on and off. And I'm going to show you an easy way. This is the way I've done it for years. And the only tools we're going to use are basically a pair of channel locks. These are Nipex um, version of channel locks. I think they're. I think these are the Cobras, is what Nipex calls them. Nipex, Nipex, whatever the however you pronounce it. And then just a couple screwdrivers, um, flat bladed screwdrivers. So I've already got the drum off. Um, I, I, I probably should have showed that too, but sometimes these drums can be stuck and to get this one off it, it was a little stuck all i did is i, I pound pounded on it with a hammer right here just to loosen it up just that that vibration of pounding on it with a hammer on the face uh, when the drum's on will will eventually knock it loose most of the time i mean unless you've got one that's just so, so worn and been on the car for so long that the the pads are eight into the drum um, you know you might you might have a difficult time getting it off but this one came off relatively easy after beating on it a little bit you want to make sure you don't hit the studs and the first thing I'm going to do you don't have to do this but I highly recommend it <clears throat> take you some brake clean I don't know if you can see how dirty and dusty this is but uh, it ain't no fun working on fill. So just gonna give it a good good douching down. And that's just gonna clean things up so that you don't have to sit there and fight around with it. Plus it's you know it's easier to see what's going on. Hopefully the lighting's gonna be okay. I'm about to put you on a tripod for uh, for the pretty much the remainder of, of this. Of course, the very first step, take a good look at the way things are. If you need to take a picture, take a picture. But I'll show you a little trick that I do, um, and I've, I've never needed a picture uh, by doing it this way. Uh, of course, you want to make sure your wheel cylinder isn't leaking. And it was dry. It was dusty, but it was dry. So that's a good thing. Um, if it's if it's wet, that means it's leaking. You're going to need to replace the wheel cylinder. But uh, let me get you on a tripod, and we'll get on with this. I'll show you how easy it can actually be um, if you just kind of you know think about it a little bit. They do make specialized tools um, for taking some of this stuff off, but I know most people probably aren't going to have them. So I'll show you what I use. I, I like I say. If you got channel locks or Nipex or anything similar, a big pair of pliers will actually work. Um, going to be difficult with the regular pliers on some of these springs, but uh, channel locks is really kind of what you want. What I used to use back in the day was the small uh, six-inch pair of channel locks, but you know, on these on these bigger, this is a full-size truck, so things are pretty much open. Uh, a big pair works just fine. So anyway, let me get you on a tripod. Okay, the first thing I do is start taking these springs here off. Any horizontal springs come off first. <clears throat> and all I do, find a spot I can grip onto it. <clears throat> if you need to push like this, you can. A lot of times, you, know, you can just find the leverage point and just pull it off. 
So that piece is off and the spring's off. Now I try to set the, and I'll show you how I set these down, but I set them down in a similar pattern as to the way they came off. That spring's off. Now there's a bottom spring down here, similar deal. That spring's off. Take your adjuster bar. Now I go ahead, screw this on in roughly where I think it's going to need to be. Now for these little doohickeys, there's all, there's little, all these are retainers to help hold the, uh, the drum on. Let's see. I'll do this one because you can't really see this one over here. But all I do, open the channel locks up to roughly the, the size you, uh, of the retainer. Get a grip on it. Don't grip it so hard that you bend it or distort it. And then you just turn it. Push in and turn. And then that's off. It's that easy. Same thing over here. That one's off. So there's that shoe. And as you probably know, on a drum brake system, these are called shoes. On a disc brake, they're pads. Now, I'll try to get you a good look at this. This, is, this can be kind of tricky. Um, so get a view of it. Where are we at here? Right there. So there's like a little C-clip right here. Basically what you got to do, I'm going to try to keep you, hopefully I'll keep you in frame on all this. You've got to, to spread these apart. Now the problem with that is this thing will rotate. So it's kind of hard to uh, to hold it whenever you try to get a screwdriver or something in there to, to spread it open. So what I found works pretty good is if you can grip onto it, grip onto the back like that to hold it. And I'm trying to do this, I don't know if you can see that, I'm trying to do this for the camera. I'm gonna get in here with my screwdriver, I'm gonna be able to spread these apart. I'm probably gonna to have to get out of the frame because uh, to be able to do this, uh, I need a little bit of room. Turn it just a little bit to where I can get on it better. You're just going to sandwich that whole thing so that it so that it can't turn on you. And then once you get it spread open a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's spread open just a little bit. You can take your channel locks and you kind of get on it and just kind of push it out. Need to adjust them. Now there's usually a little washer. It's a little spring washer, and then there's the there's the little clip. You may need to spread this apart just a little bit more to make it easy to go back on, which is what I'm going to do right here. Okay, 
So the old pads are, or shoes, are off. Got the new ones. Figure out the orientation they got to go in, then just basically the reverse procedure. Stick your little spring washer back on there. Line this one back up. Oh, okay. All I'm doing right now is putting the little spring retainer on. And I'll show you when I get over on the other side so you can see what I'm doing. How easy that is now. <clears throat> so what I do is on the little stud right here that you can't see right now. There you go. So this little stud, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little slot in it so that that will go in. When you pick these up with your pliers or your channel locks, pick them up to where these are sticking up so when you stick it in and you turn it, it will lock in. Hope, hope that made a little bit of sense. Okay, so this stud right here, I've got the I've got the slot going vertical. I'm gonna pick the spring up with the slot going vertical so that whenever I and I'm kind of doing this at an angle because the camera's in the way. Okay, so now the pads are being retained by these springs. Everything's lined up. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the bottom spring in. And I don't know if there's actually a, if it's better to put the top ones in or the bottom. I always just go, go with the bottom. Before I forget, so let me show you. So you don't have to take a picture. I set everything down in the direction and the orientation that it comes off. That way, when I pick these up, I, I know that the spring, some of these springs, in fact, it looks like both of these are opposite. If you see the way this hook goes here this one's going the opposite way and of course on this one you've got the longer arm than you do over here obviously the adjuster bar has to go a certain way so I, I lay that down in the order and the orientation that I take it off that way when I go back on with it I at least know that uh, that's the direction that everything needs to, to be to be lined up So I'm gonna go with the big spring.
We'll go ahead and put the adjuster in. This little jingus goes in right here. This is the little lever that actually, when you hit your emergency brake, that's what ratchets it to adjust it. Now for the last spring, I've got it hooked right here. Just gonna grab it. Make sure everything's somewhat lined up. And that's pretty much it. All drum brakes are pretty similar to one another, but I mean, there are differences. Like I say, this is on a GM full-size pickup. And uh, This is the way it this is the way it's done. Pretty much one tool and a screwdriver. Uh, you know, two tools I guess, ch uh, channel locks, uh, and a screwdriver. And then to make sure whoops, this is adjusted, we're going to uh, I like to dump all the old brake dust out of the drum. Now when you put this on, you know we ran that adjuster back in. So it's gonna to have to be adjusted out to where it where it needs to be. So obviously this one's gonna to have to be ran out. All you gotta do, take a screwdriver, go in the direction you know that that runs the adjuster rod out and it's trial and error you just got to run it out a little bit until you until it just slides on you don't want it binding they will they will self adjust so it doesn't have to be perfect Call that good. Once you step on the brakes and everything centers, that will that will loosen up. But that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. That's that's pretty much it. I'm going to put the the tires on, the wheels, and and. Uh, this is going to be done. You know, so doing your own brake shoes definitely is not a uh, problematic deal. And if you've got a Honda or any kind of a smaller car, it's even going to be easier than this. Everything's smaller, everything's, you know, the springs are weaker, so you don't have to put near as much strength into it to get them on and off. So if you've never done it, it'll probably take a little longer than this, but. Um, it's really no big deal. I would definitely recommend taking a picture before you take things apart. That way you do have something to reference, but if you've done them a few times, then if you just set things down in the order that they come off of and in the right direction, it's, it's easy enough to put them back together. Anyway, that's about all I got. Again, two, this is a 2013 Silverado. This is your typical drum brake on most GMs. So, I mean, dating all the way back to the 70s, this is a very similar uh, setup. So if you've got any kind of a GM truck or even a full-size car or whatever that's got drum brakes on it, this is gonna be a similar ordeal. All right, you guys have a good day.